Testing. Is anybody here? <laughs> now that I'm back, please let me know if my audio is good. I can hear it myself. Let me know if my audio is good. I can hear myself. We're good. Oh, I had to restart my computer. No biggie. Let's keep going. Like nothing happened here. And uh, as a bonus, we also fixed fixed some stuff with the stream that wasn't connecting properly. So that's even better. How is everybody? How was the weekend? I can hear myself. We're good. Okay, just one last time. So I lost the picture of the baby pangolin, so we're gonna have to go find it again. Because I didn't save it before I turned off my computer. So let's get go, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. New documents. I'm gonna change the range so that I don't get that that gradient in the background. And press turn off my light box here. Um pangolin. No, it's not a pangolin, I don't think so. I think it's a platypus. Here it is. It's so cute, Chub chubby and awkward. So we're gonna try to make at least our version of this today. Saswata gosh, hi. Pancake, I'm so glad you can hear me. I've been so very looking forward to this. <laughs> Brian, hello. Prashan, hello. JJ, Rob, hi. How is everybody? What a start. What a start, I must say. Um, I definitely got punked by like everything that could have gone wrong on my computer going wrong. <laughs> Isn't it really cute? I know. Okay, so I'm going to start by selecting a sphere. Drawing it in, clicking edit up here. I'm also going to make polymesh 3D if you don't do that and you just use a primitive, you're not gonna get all of the options when it comes to the geometry tab, so you gotta make polymesh 3D. Press X to start the symmetry going. Gonna go ahead and change the material. Uh, I use ZBrush out of the box, like fully out of the box. Um, so as you can tell, there's no setups. Uh, trust me, I don't do this because I like it. I just do it because I find it's easier for beginners if my ZBrush is exactly the way um, you know, you know exactly the way it comes out of the box. Pedro, hi on a good Saturday. Good Saturday to you too. So let's get started on this little baby. Um, I'm just gonna make the, the sphere his its head. <laughs> so that's the beak area. Have you guys um, ever stopped to study or think, read about or think even think about the um, platypus? Truly. One of the biggest niche uh, mysteries when it comes to mammals. Don't you agree? Um, so the platypus, it it's the only mammal that has... I think I can hear myself. It's the only mammal that has a beak. <laughs> the only mammal that is hatched from an egg, I think. And they are poisonous. Isn't that crazy? Just goes to show, man. Like, all these, like crazy prehistoric animals that we've had uh like that we now have like reconstructions of in museums and they look like super unlikely like maybe they're not that unlikely you know just kind of like gonna block in here um just super super roughly just kind of the overall shape i want this to start taking today we're gonna use dynamesh i'm in the mood for dynamesh uh usually i flip flop between sculptures pro and dynamesh And geeks, and also it's easier to follow tutorials. They have a sting at their legs. Um, dynamesh, dynamesh, dynamesh. Where do we go? So geometry. Dynamesh. And then I'm gonna put my resolution down 32. That's my magic number for starting, usually. Might even be a little bit too dense for me. So this is something I talk about every single stream. Uh, but... When it comes to topology, you want to start low, unless you have like insane amounts of control with ZBrush. You want to start with like um, big polygons, like very not dense topology, and that will help you get cleaner results. 
And it just looks like a little seahorse. In fact, like this is too high for me, so I'm gonna turn it down to like 16. Oh yeah, that's that's a good starting point right there, in my opinion. Welcome to Platypus Hour. <laughs> that's what I should rename my stream. Just just generally, even when I'm not working at a platypus. Um so let me introduce myself because uh, the stream hasn't really gone the way it normally does. Uh, my name is Ana Carolina Pereira. I'm from Brazil. I am a technical artist by trade, although I just made the switch to become a professor instead, like at a college. Right now I'm teaching game art and design uh, and, and virtual reality uh, stuff, just generally. Um, virtual reality, coding, art, art in Unreal and things like that. Um, and soon I'll be teaching ZBrush too, besides just streams, hopefully. Um, I have been in the United States for about seven years, I think. And uh, I always wanted to be a character artist when I was in, in college. But then uh, I switched to technical arts because I came to find that technical artists had... Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound bad. Technical artists had have an easier time landing jobs and keeping jobs. At least based on the research I had done whenever I decided to switch. Um, so I decided to switch to that, but character art is still very much uh, a huge passion of mine. So I do these streams. And I teach people and do stuff like that. Let's... I'm gonna take a step back. We're, I'm not ready for arms yet. Let's get the base just a little bit looking right. I'm using the snake hook brush, which is a great brush for blocking in the beginning shapes things. Need some perspective on just a little bit. Sometimes it's good to use the Damien standard to block stuff out. Um, so I do that, like just a kind of a big one with maybe like a high focal shift so that it's like nice and pointy and like maybe lower lower intensity. Oh, I should have probably switched that. Oh, thanks for letting me know, Matt. What are your thoughts on when to use Dynamesh versus Sculptures? Um, I choose based on my mood now, but uh, if you're trying to make that decision, uh, I usually do um, Dynamesh if I want to re rearrange the topology throughout the entire mesh um, consistently. And then I use... Um, and then I use... Sculptures, if I want to increase or decrease the, um, the mesh density in a specific area. So I might actually use Sculptures today, as, on to as well as Dynamesh. Mesh. I'm gonna leave more space here between the head and the chest so that we can actually do some sculpting in there. making a lot of assumptions about this little dude's anatomy um, because I, one, I'm not a master of baby platypus anatomy and two, this is like the only picture I found. Hey from the newly freed state of Florida. Why is state of Florida newly freed? <sighs> Why don't you not have an accent? Mine's super strong. Sorry, off topic. Um, because I've lived in English speaking countries for a long time, so I speak enough English and then eventually your accent gets better. It might not go away completely, but like it totally does get better. Especially if you watch TV and um, do stuff like that in English. Uh, it makes all the difference. That's a tip that I can give everybody that's trying to learn a new language um, or just get better at a language. It's just like watch TV, watch movies. 
uh, in that language without subtitles in your original language. Make sure you're, if you have subtitles on, make sure it's in English. I need subtitles because I, otherwise I cannot understand what anybody's saying in any movie in English at all. Like, I don't know, maybe it's like a, it's an English thing. I just can't understand things without subtitles. Will you make hands too? Uh, no, not the, not the per people's hands, just the little dude's hands. I really make hand, I really hate making hand, it's so hard. I've done like so many hand streams, just cause it's so annoying to make hand, so we just embrace it on my stream at this point. So platypus dude, I'm blocking it out, no biggie. I love the little pudgy belly and belly button. That's so cute. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Isn't this the most cutest thing ever? I know. It's weird to like not have enough reference. I, I'm gonna like find, see if I can find more baby platypus. I looked up it up like right before the stream started, and I couldn't find any that matched. Maybe because this isn't a platypus. <laughs> we'll find out. Right now, my sculpt is looking like something from Club Penguin. Who here played Club Penguin? Uh, before it shut down. Tell me this doesn't look like something from Club Penguin. Let's go ahead and block in the little legs. I spent so much money in Club Penguin. <laughs> Okay, I played Club Penguin, but I never spent a dime. I think, like, just I'm coming to terms with the fact that, like, when it comes to uh, online things, I'm so stingy. That I mentioned again. Uh, but yeah, never spent a single dime on Club Penguin. That looks like a like a pincer, like wire cutters. These little like, wire cutter legs here. It's okay. I believe in my ability to turn this thing around. <laughs> It's such difficult to understand the shape that we're looking at. Very interesting to hear a story. I went uh, animator into rigging slash technical into VR, now working as a professor. Oh my god, we have so much in common. I like It's like the same. It went into technical stuff, then into being a professor. How do you like being a professor? Uh, I just started three weeks ago, so I don't have an opinion yet. It's best to keep opinions for later. Just gonna kind of inflate those little leg nubs just a little bit, alright? And then let's go ahead and just block in kind of like the overall shape of the little uh, back turned hands here. Alright, this is possibly one of the weirdest things I've blocked out so far. <laughs> Anita Hinko. VR, it stands for virtual reality. It's uh, how I've made my living for many years and still sort of do. <laughs> Find the shapes of the head just a little bit. Make the snout more snouty. I 
gonna take the pinch brush and I'm gonna create just the shadow of this membrane right here. It'll help me block it in. I'm gonna take another brush, I'm just gonna drag it upwards like this. Then in standard, large, low intensity to just kind of start blocking in a little bit of the edge. I think um, the proportions are off. The head needs to be way bigger and the body needs to be a little smaller. Maybe some inflate here on the sides. Yeah, that double thick thighs. I bought the game cards, they had so many fun costumes and new mini games. How to give the edge loop to creased mesh? Um, I don't, I, it's hard for me to visualize what you're asking. Have you ever modeled a self-portrait? Uh, yeah, when I was in college, I tried to do a self-portrait. Um, I always remember that I get asked this question like a lot more often than I would think. Uh, and also what happened was I did it my self-portrait when I was with my parents in the, at their house in, during Christmas. And the reason this stuck with me is that during my self-portrait, I actually developed the first, I, I noticed and developed and really started feeling the first symptoms of my carpal tunnel syndrome, which uh, I developed due to just complete lack of self-care and overworking, bad posture, no sleep, the list goes on. Not taking breaks, not stretching. So like it was during my self-portrait that I started feeling all those things. So every time I think back to when I made that self-portrait, I also remember that like, um, that's around the time I got my carpal tunnel and it's like getting those of you guys who know this getting a chronic um, injury or or disease or something in a part of your body that you need in order to make your living and follow your career is like pretty traumatic um, yeah so I was like am I gonna have to give up my entire career because I can't do this anymore like it was crazy so um, I, I pressed on and then I was able to eventually with time find ways to uh, improve my my situation <laughs> improve my um, symptoms I guess Uh, Sabrina, it's comforting that even you with your English speaking skills don't understand all you hear in TV. Thank you. No, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Like, for real, for real, like, I only watch TV, American TV with subtitles on, like, always. Otherwise, I don't even know. Yesterday, I didn't, I tried to not, and then I had to stop and be like, nope, sorry. We're gonna watch this with subtitles. So I'm gonna pinch uh, the armpit area just a little bit to kind of, like, flatten this out. But I'm not gonna create this skin... This skin flap here is what sold me on the entire model. Like, I want to make that skin flap. So uh, let me think of how I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to use the curve trifill. Where is that? There it is. Curve trifill. Let's see. Make it small. I'm just going to get in here, look at it, and draw a line under the chest. Let's see small. Here. And then it'll create a little bit of geometry right there. What I'm going to do is I want to make it thinner. And I wouldn't have to do this step if I had just made the brush just a little bit, um, just a little bit uh, smaller, but alas. I'm going to go in here. You see how when I'm trying to scale it, it's actually moving it around? It's really annoying. Oh, partially because it's in the wrong area. Let's go ahead and center it to the mesh but also partially because um, I have local symmetry turned off. It comes turned off by default, so it's actually on here in the middle. 
it should, uh, when you turn local symmetry on, it, it won't move when you scale. That's a pro tip for you guys. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fit it in here, and then when we dynamesh it, it's all gonna merge. And hopefully it won't be a dirty result. Uh, first I'm gonna take the curve tri-fill again, I'm just gonna click down once so that I lose my curves, I don't have to see them anymore. Um, got brush. Snake hook is what I want, so I'm gonna just kind of adjust this so that I can make it more intense. So coming down from like under the pecs, I guess. I just kind of make it more apparent. I'm taking some liberties with this model because I want it that skin flap, man. It's the only thing that's important to me right now. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Let me see here. Okay, so we do have two different um, like groups. That's good. I'm gonna check to see what happens if I just dynamesh it all together. Um, right now, nothing good, but it's okay. Whenever we go up a little bit, it'll be better. Nathong, it's my first semester full time. With COVID and remote learning, it's feeling like a lot of work. <laughs> so this is your first semester as a teacher, right? It's also my first semester as a teacher, and it's a lot of work, I, and I don't know if it'll ever not be a lot of work. Oh no, nothing's happening with ZBrush and VR, but I'm a VR uh, artist and professional, so uh, I'm here to also answer questions about how we can um, integrate, use ZBrush with our VR games and simulations and stuff like that. Patrick, why am I sculpting this? Because one, it's adorable, two, it's cute, three, it's interesting, four, it has awesome skin flaps. Romans, opa, did you study English and content to learn more about modeling? Hi, when do you use the mouse in ZBrush? Uh, Jepti, me, never. I will never ever use the, Z the mouse in ZBrush. But there are some scenarios where I could see the mouse being useful such as if you're doing hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Um, that's a, a time where you could possibly pull that off. So like hard surface modeling. But if you're doing sculpting, I recommend using a tablet. They aren't so expensive anymore in most places. Um, I understand if you're in a different country, the prices can vary. But um, it's really made come a long way. Uh, mine is super cheap, like it's so most it's the most cheap one you can buy and like I've used it for so long and I'm never gonna buy a more expensive one. Like I just I don't need it. I'm fine. I'm gonna just draw in the shadow of where the eyes would be. Make the snout just a little bit longer. A beak, right? It looks like a beak to me. Maybe this is an anteater, not a platypus? <gasps> it's an anteater, not a platypus! Or is it? <laughs> I don't know what this is. It, I found it on Pinterest, therefore, like, it's impossible to <laughs> get information. A uh, baby anteater. Mm. I'm not sure it's a match. That's getting kind of cute, though. Hmm? Well... Well... It could perhaps be... Echidna to me? Okay, let's look at baby Echidna. <gasps> oh my god! You nailed this! Wow, a round of applause. That's it. That is it. It's an echidna. A round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Do people still say yes? I don't know. I haven't been outside in like eight months, so I, how am I supposed to know? Okay. So now we have more. Oh, look at this face. This is the happiest day of my life. Okay. Okay. It changes everything. This. Oh, <laughs> it changes everything. So cute! 
This is why I stream, guys, because I can't do it on my own. Budget the baby and Gina. It's okay, so these are just little, like, horny horn guys, I guess. Look at it, it looks it looks like it's ready to fight. I love it. You no, know, like I thought it was a platypus and then I noticed like platypuses is that how you say the plural of platypus? Like they don't have big claws, they have webbed feet. First tip should have been that. <laughs> I'm just grabbing a few extra reference pictures here. Continue. Like, I wish I had saved the one with the cute face. No, I can't find it anymore. Oh, there it is. Cute face one. Looks like something from How to Train Your Dragon. Kirith looks awesome. I'm downloading it right now. Yay! <laughs> so now I know that the tail is like a little nubbin. All right, well, that changes a lot. This is why you need reference, boys and girls. Perhaps should even figure out the species of the animal you're trying to create before you start. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Honestly, like, it, it paid off. Everything's still good here. All right. Now we have a little bit more clarity. I'm gonna go with this face set up a little bit different. Um, this is probably like an older one, but that's okay. I don't think anybody is a master of Echidna anatomy here. I love him so much. He's a sleepy boy. I'm probably super confused, like, why are people holding me and taking pictures of me? Gosh. Alright, let me go ahead and turn on groups for Dynamesh so that I don't accidentally um, wipe out this little flap. I'm gonna turn Dynamesh resolution up to 32, finally. So what that did was that it kept the two groups from merging. So now the skin flap is still, um, like, I can just move it on its own, it's not all merged down, so that's good. Is it low key coming together, starting to, anyway, that's what I'm trying to tell myself. Damn. Why does this baby have a galaxy ring? Um. Hola, Carolina. Colombia. Okay, I'm going to say it because I'm going to say brush. I'm going to say it because 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 I'm Assista muitos tutoriais e siga. E não se preocupe se você não está fazendo projetos tão lindos quanto os profissionais, porque isso é natural e vai vir com o tempo. And now I'm going to do the Damien Standard uh, part of the block out, where I'm going to just kind of like block out um, a little bit of the anatomy features, a little bit more. So like the little belly chunk right there. Uh, kind of like where the... Where the size connect? And the move brush is a good partner for this technique so that we can just kind of um, come in here and like just adjust proportions and things like so. Trying to not make it the thighs super strong, they still need that curve to them. A little awkward curve. That's what I like to call it. Perfect degree of awkwardness. The 
give me standard again to just kind of reinforce that little skin flap that they have right there. Como assim, o brasileiro? Eu faço lives aqui há muito tempo, mas bem-vindos. É... Só um instantinho. E eu faço live aqui em português também, de duas em duas semanas, no sábado. Sábado sim, sábado não. Eu faço live sábado sim e sábado não aqui, e eu faço, é, como se diz, uma em inglês e uma em português, alternão. So, I missed so many Questions. When did that happen? I noticed they use perspective, but it doesn't distort the model. How do you select the perspective to use? Um, I research common perspectives in photographs. So like if you're trying to do a celebrity and you're finding a lot of uh, paparazzi shots of the celebrity, look up paparazzi uh, field of view and all that stuff. And just use that and it doesn't distort as much as like the super extreme perspective. But here's the thing. More importantly than the perspective that the paparazzi and the picture and the photographers are using uh, is if you're making a model for a game, you have to know what perspective, um, like what field of view and all that good stuff, um, the game or movie or whatever is using because then you get a really good grasp on how the final result looks. I've made this mistake many times. Um, not many times, but like one time during a big project, I didn't... I didn't use the right amount of perspective, and it was for a VR project. So the perspective is kind of extreme when you get up in there. And whenever... it looked great in ZBrush, but whenever I brought it into Unreal, um, it looked awful, awful, like... like just like... It looked like fish islands, almost, in Unreal. It was shocking. <laughs> I learned that lesson really well after that. But anyway, um, the point is, is that use the perspective that you know is going to be the final perspective, so that you can actually uh, see how the final is going to look. lot flatter than I thought. And, and ready to fight. A lot more ready to fight than I thought. <laughs> oh, and they have more skin flaps. Yay! That's the good stuff. Acho muito foda ser mandou lives. Obrigada, Zila. E são poucos espinhos, sim, um bebezinho. What's the square thing on your cursor? Oh, it's just a bug. Don't worry about it. It's not ZBrush, it's uh, OBS, my recording software. Yeah, do not worry about my cursor. That is a streaming bug. Not a ZBrush bug. A bug that I forget to look at. Like, uh, every time I stream, somebody asks me about that, and then I'm like, oh, I should add that to my to-do list to like, figure out why that's happening, and then I never do. It's, honestly, it's not that important, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm gonna block in the little belly button.
it's cute and horrifying all the same time. My favorite kind of animals are like that, like um, the Sphinx cats is a big one. It comes to being cute and horrifying at the same time. I think we humans are very hypocritical in that way. We don't like mammals without fur. And yet, <laughs> we are mammals without fur. Have you ever stopped to think about that? Stop for a minute. I, I have my own theory on that, on why that is. And it's because like normally mammals have fur. So mammals missing fur like are probably suffering from some sort of disease, maybe like a skin disease, mange or something like that. And a lot of what we find cute or attractive or unattractive is based on um, protection, like self-protection. So we are programmed in our brains to be uh, almost repulsed by things that we find to be uh, dangerous or or harmful in some way. Yeah, that's a thing. It's probably why we don't like bugs. <laughs> The Baron's like, I don't know what the heck that tiny thing is flying at me at high speeds. It could kill me. Let's go. Hi, Alex. Do you use a mouse or key and keyboard? Uh, no, I use a pen and tablets. Like, uh, tablets. Vou perguntar de novo, já que perdeu umas, umas perguntas. Have you ever sculpted and play and display like Cintiq? If so, do you think it's is it worth it? Um, I have, and I don't like them, but it's a personal choice. So it's a completely personal choice. Remember, um, I don't know if you guys were here for my story, but I told you guys about um, my carpal tunnel. Guess, guess what display I had just started using like a month before I developed my carpal tunnel that never went away. Like it's partially coincidence, part lifestyle, but like the pen, so these kinds of tablets here, so these kinds, they are very ergonomic. They lay flat against the table and you just draw like you would on paper and you like your body is facing forward at the screen, not facing down. And it's very good for your posture, right? And your wrists. The Cintiq, you're like drawing like at an angle and um, it starts causing issues for a lot of people. Even people who like it. I don't like the Cintiqs. I don't like them and I like don't use them. In fact, I've plugged in these cheap ones into a Cintiq computer before. <laughs> but it's personal, so some people feel like they can't use these because they can't see where they're drawing. Personal decisions. If you have the money and you want to buy one, do it. If you don't, you don't need one. Like, trust me, you don't. I have no idea how I'm going to pull off making this thing look cute. <laughs> uh, Natasha, this is so cute. I didn't know about itchiness as a thing. How do you flip images in pure ref without a keyboard? Oh, man, I don't know. Without a keyboard? Um, I recommend having a keyboard. Just for everything. I couldn't even get logged into my computer without a keyboard. This anatomy is so different from normal stuff, like nor normal stuff, like humans and, and the more mainstream animals, like it's so different because it's mostly like chunk and skin, like, and I think it's a good exercise actually, like it's, it's really making me stop and think. So, um, if you ever want an anatomy challenge, do baby itchiness. 
uh, last time I did the stream, I did a baby baby, like a human baby. And I also thought that was a great uh, exercise if you're looking to improve your anatomy and observational skills. First, I'm going to kind of dig in the eye area. Chonkopai, the area around it. And then kind of just... Eu comprei recentemente tua mão, onde você usava uma mesa padrãozinha mesmo. Pois é, senti que você fica meio encurvado depois de horas trabalhando suas costas para em remédios. Uh, what app do you use for reference images? It's called Pure Ref, the name is right there on top of the pictures. Mostly chunk. Pure Ref, yeah. I recommend, like, if you're a ZBrush artist, like, you need reference software, and I can't think of a better one than Pure Ref, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Like, it's free, it floats on top of the window, it doesn't get in the way, it's simple to use. Win, 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 win. win. head needs to get way bigger, I think. I'm gonna keep blocking stuff in and get to that. Clay Buildup is probably one of my, it's my favorite brush and it's the best for blocking in um, like volumes. How many different creatures have you made? I have no idea. Bro Nation, hola, obrigada. And I made a pug. Did you like it? Put it on your Discord. I don't, I didn't look at it, so I'm sorry. I'm busy, like, I haven't had time to look at people's work yet. Um, for a long time. Oh, but, um, if you want me to look at your work, tomorrow on my personal channel, Anna Carolina Arts, on Twitch, we're doing a challenge stream. So the challenge is going to be creepy creatures challenge. So if you want to join, um, I'm going to post my link so that you can go follow the channel. Go follow me in general. Go ahead and get that going. I always forget to do this. I have to do it. I'm going to let that load because it's not wanting to load. Maybe I was able to freeze this word. All right, let me go ahead and post it. So uh, there's all my links. There's so many, but if you click on the one that is my Twitch channel, uh, first of all, follow me on everything. If you want to keep up to date with my artwork, my streaming schedule, um, reach out to me and ask me a question. I try to answer everybody's questions when I have time um, and stuff like that. But uh, join my discords if you want to join our challenge tomorrow. The rewards for joining our challenge is one, it's fun. Two, you get to learn stuff. Three, um, I'll give everybody who joined a shout out on my Instagram and Twitter. And then the winner gets a portfolio review if you want it. If you don't, that's totally fine too. Um, 
So yeah, that's on my channel tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Time. Symmetry has betrayed me. I turned it off just a little bit so that I don't get that seam down the middle. Maybe just a little bit bigger in the head. A little bit more dramatic. Hola, what the hell is scene? Creeper chain creatures, hashtag Louis CK. Epag, hi. Which tablet to use? A medium size Wacom Intuos. It's okay, you should just paint some googly eyes and call it done. <laughs> Jago to the bang. Uh, did you start sculpting with ZBrush first or did you start with Blender and transition later? Um, I started with uh, 3ds Max actually, but then I changed to ZBrush. Well, I, I don't think change is the right word because they, I, used, I would use them for two different things. Uh, but I, ZBrush was my first real 3D interest and love. They can make the head too big. <laughs> Just not this one. Tem canal no YouTube? Sim, eu acabei de postar o link, só que eu não costumo postar muito lá. Ok. Essa é a blocagem dos dedinhos. Eu vou... I'm gonna block out the little fingers. Toes. Just gonna make it really, really, really simple. So I'm just <laughs> literally gonna just drag in a sphere. I'm gonna make the biggest claw. Um, make it long. Maybe the pinch brush first. Can I make it pointy? Kind of straight up, make it pointy, and then I'm gonna make it wider at the base here. Then I'm gonna use my deformers, I think. If I click here, um, I press W to bring up the gizmo, and then I go to the settings thingy and then I click the former. Now I can actually use some really cool deformers to make this shape a little bit more plainly so make it longer. And kind of like rotate it. Increase. Make it long like this and then increase. Oh gosh, it does not like that. Kind of going in and selecting things and just rotating them. <laughs> it's easy to forget how the rest of the body looks, huh? 
I'm just gonna make this base a little bit bigger by scaling this up. And then I'm gonna make the whole thing thinner by just kind of grabbing the corners and just whoop. It's not perfect. I should really use deformers the whole time, but. Maybe this way. Gonna go ahead and accept. Now I'm just gonna maybe inflate the tip a little bit so it's not so pointy. Mego, I tend to modelar mais do que consigo. Sinto que essa não é minha área. Tenho dificuldade com programa e tudo mais. Bom, assim, é uma é uma coisa ter dificuldade com modelagem. Outra coisa ter dificuldade com programa. Se você quiser modelar, você não pode deixar o programa ser o que te impede. Mas se você realmente não sente vontade é, pra, pra modelar ou pra seguir em frente, aí, aí você sabe que não é tanto pra você, assim. Não faz mal, né, se não for. Ok, I'm gonna block in the foot area. How can I move the gizmo and just these little buttons here? And and if you want to move it independently of everything, you just click this little um I can't even zoom in, this little lock. Um you just click the lock and now you can move it. Kind of blocking out kind of the pads area as I see it. Now I'm gonna grab the little um, claws and start placing them. Oh, I'm gonna turn local symmetry back on. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Move some trees right here, so I'm just gonna turn that on. This is the biggest claw. Kind of does the silhouette for the foot, so it's very important. I'm just gonna press down Alt and drag. Well, oh, actually, just Control and drag to make a copy. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And press Control W so that I can keep track of the polygroups. Rotate it as needed. Control drag. 
and see the little small one. Control W to make it into its own little polyhue. I'm just kind of adding more rotation to each one so that they have a cooler silhouette. This one needs to be even shorter. Last but not least, invert the mask, um, make it its own poly group. This one needs to be super tiny. Baby piggy is about water. How is program up? Zbrush, there's Mili Vinci. Uh, I just arrived and I'm like, what the heck is that? But it's cute. I know, right? I felt the same way. So I'm gonna just inflate this little one to make it look less blunt. Then kind of deviate it more. So you see how important the claws are <laughs> for this little animal. And then let's go ahead and move it one more time because I see that it, had, it has like a fifth digit right here. Control drag, rotate as needed. I do this for everything when it comes to hands basically. Like I only make one finger and then I drag, um, even for people, like I only make one finger and then I drag it around. And I copy and paste it and then I just dynamesh it down. How do you guys make fingers? Control W to make them to a new polygroup and then boop. Now let's take a look at the claws on the hands. I don't really have a good reference for any of these. Okay, that's okay. Is the contest published yet? What do you mean the contest is published yet? It's not a contest, it's just a challenge. Um... It's not, it's gonna happen tomorrow during the stream. It's basically like a life event. Hmm. Not exactly where to put these bad boys here. Maybe I just have to place each one again. I think so. Which I'm gonna undo all that and, and just move around the, the big one. <laughs> okay, control drag. Oh no. There's something still wrong here. I think there was a copy still made. Ah, here it is.
Oh, I think I have to block in the hand just slightly better. In order to be able to put down the claws. Sorry if I ever go silent, it just means that I got in the zone for that period of time. Um, hello, kickoff. Uh, the spot you're going to separate. <laughs> um, thank you, Tsubotop. Which cute animal, or animal are you doing? Um, it's a baby echidna, is what we're making. I almost forgot what this was for a second there. It's kind of weird to like get those um, rotations right, or not right, but better. Um, thank you, William. Hola, as Bailey. Hello, good bang. We'll turn on the polyframe so that I can see which one this is. I always start by the biggest one. Um, that's just personal preference. Um, Drag it, invert it, polygroup it. it. Saves me so much headache later if I just polygroup it now. <sighs> Make this smaller, invert it, polygroup it. Control W for that. It's rotate, rotate, rotate. I'm kind of just putting them in the orientation that I think looks the best. I'm not necessarily following <laughs> anything. I'm gonna use the move topological. Uh, to not switch brush move topological, uh, which will only move one polygroup at a time. I'm just gonna kind of refine this that way. It looks a lot better now that it has little um, claws. I'm a generalist 3D. Your work is incredible. Oh, thank you, Asveili. I'm going to press anything because I'm going to press anything because I'm going to press anything. Can I 
Ruth says, Elena, can I just ask, in the thumbnail on Facebook, there's that a picture of your computer's wallpaper on the desktop? It's a beautiful garden type thing with a stone lamp in the right. Sorry, it's just a nice picture. Uh, look at this thing right here. It's, um, from a painted background from one of the Studio Ghibli films, uh, Kiki's, Di Kiki's uh, Delivery Surface, which is my favorite one. Uh, so if you want to have it too, you can just look up uh, Kiki's Delivery Service Wallpaper. That's what I did. And I found this one. It was like one of the first things I googled. It's really relaxing to just have in your desktop. Like, um, So if something ever crashes and then all of a sudden like my desktop comes up because you close, I just don't, I don't feel angry because, you know, it's nice to look at. Like, hello. Nice garden. Now we get to the fun parts, which is to, like actually like block out some um, proper secondary shapes and volumes in here. It's kind of like starting to block out these little fingers. I'm gonna use a little bit of what I know about human anatomy try to fill in the blanks where my brain is trying to like not understand what I'm doing here. If it's bad then then I'll change it. Let's go ahead and add the eyeballs. Um super important step, cannot be missed. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna flesh out the eyelid area here. Oh, my smooth brush is so intense. I don't recommend having that on unless, unless you're doing like stylized or something. I'm gonna do my standard that and kind of poke in the, the hole where the eye is gonna be. No big deal. Brush, insert primitives, insert sphere. It's a cool view. It's a little monster. Alright, then I'm gonna split unmasked points, so now the eyes have their own subtool here. Let's go back to the head, play uh, Denian Standard just to delineate just a little bit better the eyelid vibe that we're going for here. But it's it's too low resolution, so like we're, we're not gonna get far with that. I'm just gonna mark in the little nose. We're starting to get somewhere. It's starting to look somewhat less... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what the word that I should use is, like, horrifying. But, but, it, but I don't know. It has a special place in my heart. I don't want to call something horrifying just because it's ugly. <laughs> Turn down intensity again a little bit. That means standard to uh, force block here. Some of these like more um, dramatic features of the anatomy. See how handy that uh, skin flap comes in that we made earlier? Gonna try to give me a standard um, this whole area here, like the chest area. It's kind of reverse Damien standard, uh, creating some skin flaps. Just if you press down all any Damien standard, you get these really nice, like sharp uh, additions of volume. Mm. 
it's really um, a good tool. Like it's literally, uh, I just started doing this like maybe like four months ago and I will never stop. It's so good to use the, the inverted thing in standard to block in volumes. Let's have already done with different polygroups. Do you want to stick together when you Dynamesh? Uh, yes, but only if you click this button right here next to Dynamesh. It's called Groups. Uh, make sure that's selected and then it won't Dynamesh the groups together. Uh, Ruth, oh my god, yes, thank you so much. No worries, Ruth. I hope you find it. If not, like, you're gonna find a lot of really, um, really good ones too, because, like, Studio Ghibli, you know, they're known for their backgrounds and for everything else they do. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. It's a while since I'm attending your live session. Hi. I'm glad you're here, though. Glad you make it. Yeah, add the little belly button back in. It's like the cutest thing. Like I, I, I fell in love when I saw the little belly button. This part of my process is like when the thing really starts to come alive. When you start adding in the volumes with clay buildup, that's when that's when it, the magic kind of happens, in my opinion. Like, it's not even good yet, but you, just get, you start to get that organic feel. Like, oh, okay, this is like a little animal. All right, got it. Like, at least that's how my brain interprets it. Maybe for you guys, it's completely different. Okay, I'm just going, I'm just gonna start adding in the anatomical features here. I just need to do something before it drives me crazy. Just move to biological, which is gonna make this like just a little bit more aesthetic. <laughs> like it's it doesn't work super super well, but you know what? Oh, he was a full fun. Thank you, Center. It's not Portuguese, no, but I don't say no in Portuguese. Can somebody figure out what Echidna is in Portuguese, please? Echidna. Okay, let's turn on back face mask here because I am ruining the backside of this foot here. Yeah, nobody not saw that. I honestly, so much of this is only going to come whenever I go to a higher subdivision because it's like d damn near impossible to get anything um, this small done with this topology in this phase anyway for me, my, in my workflow. But look, skin flap, surprise skin flap. This is what I was in the mood to do today, like just kind of go in and enjoy creations of some skin flaps here. I'm just gonna use the Damien standard again just to block in these flaps. Move it a little bit, then go in with the inverted Damien standard and make the magic happen. Then we can't call it done. Or even, uh, we can't call it done anyway, but with some, without some pinch. Pinch is where it. The other part of the magic happens. Everything's where the magic happens today. 
Please label the flag that connected some. More skin flaps. Yay, what a day. I think it looks a little bit long from the chest to the legs. I'll take a look at that. It's made a creature in Portuguese. Perfect, though. Perfect, then. Easy to remember. It's basically the same thing. I'm going to smooth the belly out because I don't want the belly to be that affected by these. Gonna kind of come here and just use a tiny move brush to just pull out uh, right here where it bends the skin flap. And then turn, turn, tone it all down. Oh no, what happened to hit the beak? Something happened here. Some surprise. So just the whole head. At some point I changed something that messed up the head. No problem though. Because we are still in the blocking phase, like it's... Honestly, no problem. I'm just gonna fix it in a few minutes. Translate says it's a quidna. Wikipedia says, Ush, haki, <laughs> Wow, that's a hard word. Mask and move brush for the skin flaps always win for me. Uh, that's good too. Um, okay, I think I'm ready to move up with my dynamesh. Oh, wait, the little tail. Brush, mask, pen. doesn't look terrible. Oh, it's just a little tail, okay? Please don't judge me. I did something in Lotsy brush, and I haven't saved it this whole time too, which is a good point. Maybe you can still save. I clicked some sort of button at Lotsy brush here. I imprimir? No, I don't costume imprimir meus modelos. 
<laughs> Sorry guys for the technical difficulties here. I don't know what I did. I've like locked ZBrush and I haven't saved in a while. Let me see if there's a PC problem. No, I'm good. Anyway, while we wait, can what are you guys working on today? Anything interesting? Yes, I'm Brazilian, homo. I am Brazilian from Brazilian. The worst waiting for ZBrush without knowing it's your turn. It's not like it's it's like it's legit locked it. It's not even frozen. Yeah, it's not frozen, it's just locked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do I save this? Control S maybe. You see that? It's like just changing stuff. Hmm, I clicked some sort of weird button. Has anybody ever seen this happen? It's like changing my controls. Sometimes you push open another window without you noticing know, it locks up until you close it. Let's see if that's the case. No, I, it's not the case, fortunately. But that's happened to me too. Um, so I'm just going to do it, just to copy, fazer this exercise for her. Yes, I was just talking about this before that I have a tech to know, a carpal, problematic, but that. I'm gonna click click save a few times and hope for the best and I'm gonna restart it. It's okay. If if it if I lose work then it's not really a big problem because we haven't spent that long on it. Let's see when the last quick save was at twelve. 25. So I would just lose 10 minutes of work. Some of 10 minutes that were used um, doing this in the first place. So, okay, let's go ahead and shut down the brush. Yes. It's letting these save the project. So, let's see. Speed sculpts. New window, a new folder. Uh, Echidinone, right? Hopefully, at least the project is saved, but like, uh, say to top right corner, uh, unfortunately, I know how to save the tool and it didn't let me, so. That's part, the, that's the problem, it was just the locked. Let's do documents, documents. But that was kind of like my fault, I, I spammed some buttons. Uh, and it just locked up. So what did I lose here? A little bit of the footwork. The tail. Not bad. Not a big deal. No, um, Limbic Nation, I checked for that. Desde que eu estou indo cá com o ponto do trabalho, isso assim, tem como prevenir isso desde já? Trabalho muito com modelagem, sim. É, você tem que fazer seu é, workspace ser muito ergonômico. Tem que pesquisar como se faz isso. Você tem que... É... Você tem que parar para descansar, tipo, uma vez por hora. E fazer alongamentos. Você pesquisa aí, alongamento para o tono carpal e tal. It's fine, no matter what you put, simple looks.
Just kind of like re-blocking in where the little toes would go. Or I'm gonna go ahead and paint the um, the eye like a dark gray color fill object. And I'm gonna make it a uh, toy plastic material, which I never remember where to find toy plastic. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and change my brush settings to include material and color fill object. So now the eye should be shiny and black. Shiny black eyes. It's kind of cuter that way. Don't you think? I think so. I had smoothed the belly earlier. Oh yeah, I also lost the little skin flap on the leg. It's okay. Sender, you do my settings here. Uh, thank you for the stream, Anna. Your art is really inspiring. Thank you, Natasha, for saying that. It's very nice of you. You're welcome. My favorite view is actually this. Like, I, I think that's hecking adorable. Don't you? I don't know. I do. Like, little feet upwards. Isn't this so cute? Sometimes you just find your favorite view. I think this is how I'm going to render it. Like, kind of like laying it back like this with feet up. Are you going to retop it? I don't think so. Uh... I'm not planning on doing this for like as a game mesh, just kind of for my portfolio or or just forge fun for a demo, really. I don't always retopo um, unless it's for a game or for for a game type project, game type portfolio thing. I'm gonna make the head a little less lumpy. God, guys, like, it's not because it's my work, but, like, this thing is so darn cute. I just am in love with it. I, I'm so glad Pinterest is a thing, because I hate Pinterest, but uh, I always find really good stuff on there. So, pays off in the end. And thanks again for helping me figure out what kind of animal this is. I would never have gotten it without you guys. You're a lovely little guy. Felipe, muito obrigado. You're awesome. Oh, obrigado, Felipe. Carla, thank you. So, anybody working on anything interesting this weekend? Or just relaxing or doing something cool? Oh, my smooth is so strong. Burning everything here. Just sinking in the sternum area here. I'm creating that adorable little shape.
It needs like the the proportions need revision, um, which is almost always the case. Like I don't know many people who get the proportions perfect in the first try, um, unless they've been doing it for a lot of years, a lot, a lot, a lot of years. But as long as you're willing to revise and improve on your mistakes, then I think you're good. Like, don't worry if you don't get everything perfect the first time. Um, I was actually reading this interesting article about how school teaches uh, people to uh, only try once, put a lot of pressure on that one try. This is like referring to tests and, and homework and things like that. Like you try it once and then you get a grade and, and that's it. Like, you don't you don't retry, retry. Wouldn't it be better if like schools let students take tests like more often so that they could keep trying to improve? I think you'd learn a lot more that way. But anyway, it applies to art too. Like um, that kind of mentality from school comes to art. I'm like, oh, I didn't get it perfect the first time. My block out looks bad, whatever. Like I'm, I'm an awful artist, but really like as long as you're able to recognize your mistakes and, and just improve on them and fix them, listen to feedback, like you are so golden. You are so fine, you know? At least that's my opinion. Looks scary cute. <laughs> Is there a way to move the preview thumbnail freely? Uh, this thing right here? I think you can make it bigger and stuff, but I don't know. I don't really use it, to be honest. Like, I just leave it up there. <laughs> Work is habit. Absolutely. Uh, I'm good today, Andrea. How are you? I'm doing the top of the frog you did following your ZBrush session. Nice. Uh, Andrea, I'm studying Marvelous Designer and ZBrush Workflow. Oh, that's so good for you. Um, Pinterest is a labyrinth, and and it loses all of the references too. Like like you don't you'll never find out who posted that picture first. <sighs> there is no relaxing in this industry. Work work work. See that's the kind of mentality that ends up with artists going to the hospital and then quitting their job completely. Of course, there's relax in this industry. There's relax in every industry. There are people that do harder, more taxing, more dangerous jobs than us, and they still get to relax. One thing you need to like take into consideration is just time management. Like, you can get that down. You can make time for family, for friends. Start to go to the beach, and still make a wonderful career for yourself. Make tons of money. Make whatever you need. We like we do have this like very harmful mentality of just work 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 like it's it's i'm not calling you out specifically like it's just everywhere it used to be with me too like um i for example in college used to sleep three hours a night and then uh one or half an hour to an hour in the afternoon every day and like I, i'm still damaged from from the side effects of doing that but the reason i did it is because i thought i like in order to be a good artist the real artist as good as the greats, I, I had to. I had to sacrifice everything. My health, my diet, my sleep, my time. But when it comes down to it, like the time is our most, our mental health and our time is like some of our most important things. And we probably shouldn't sacrifice all of it. Especially because um, it doesn't pay off in the end. Like, yeah, you got more work done, but now you have to go to rehab or or to a hospital or you are just burned out and you quit your job or something or they fired you for sleeping at your desk or something fighting with a wild edge loop with <laughs> uh thank you frank shaw sebastian i'm glad you think it's cute hi yuri uh olympic nation cool work thank you i think we'll finish up with some memos i'm creating oh nice alex I'm a computer. <laughs> I'm experimenting with sheet keys for facial expression animation. It's been pretty fun. Oh, cool. Um, I've done stuff like that in the past. It's been good. It's been fun. I enjoyed that stuff. Um, yeah. What is that? What are you guys' opinion on work-life balance? Maybe it gets better once you have established yourself in an industry and you don't feel like 
like you're drifting anymore. Like I understand that feeling. That's when I, that's when I had my worst times, right? That's when I was like, I'm not even in the industry yet. Like I can't stop working. Funny thing is, is that it wasn't until I I stopped obsessively working that I actually got anywhere. Like all of that work got me my first job, but like actually going to therapy, working on my mental health, going back to sleep and stuff like that, like is what got me everything else that I have that I treasure so much more. Creepy little guy. Sure, I missed a finger here. Uh, Sudia, thank you for thinking this is nice work. Uh, Springshaw, you know, I'm starting to feel the same thing. Springshaw, explain. Like, um... There's a difference, guys, between being busy and being productive. Let's talk about that. There is such a difference. There are people... We need to try to be like them. Like... When people say work smart, like, that's a thing. There are people that can get work done in three hours that that takes us eight hours to do. But it's not because they're better than them. It's maybe because um, we get distracted and we make mistakes or we check social media or um, I get up to go grab coffee every five minutes as an excuse to not have to work or whatever. We gotta work on our time management so that we can have... Um, have better better outcomes with less work it's totally a thing like that's literally um my philosophy as a technical artist is like the whole point i i think the whole point of my profession existing is so that i can uh help the other artists be uh i can be a force multiplier and call it force multiplier to make the other artists be able to work faster and not harder like I think, a, a, for example, a bad manager would be like, oh, you guys got to work faster and you got to work more hours, right? But like a good manager would be like, hey, here's tools to make your work go faster without you killing yourself. Where's the truth? We're an amazing artist, Dr. Zero, uh, ZWO. Thank you. Uh, Kahla, I agree with you, Anna. However, I still struggle by taking breaks or having days off. Oh my god, so like, there's a guilt that comes along with it that you gotta break out of, and I think the only way is to practice. Practice having a day off. Like, schedule it ahead of time. Don't let it happen uh, impulsively. Uh, a lot of my guilt comes from impulsively taking time off. And then I'm like, oh, I was supposed to do this and that today, and I didn't. I'm a failure. Um, but uh, so just I schedule it ahead of time. So be like, okay, this Saturday I'm not turning on my computer unless I need to play a game or something. Like I am going to the beach, I am going to the store, I'm gonna clean my room, and I'm gonna have a good time, drink some wine at the end or something, and just make that the rule for that day. Uh, Springshaw, yeah, that's me getting distracted. Like, I should be working on my art now, but no, I'm here checking out Facebook. <laughs> the only thing that you're allowed to be distracted with is my stream, okay, guys? <laughs> no, but seriously, like, uh, I like to work with uh, streams and videos in the background, mostly that I have interviews too. The Office is a good show to watch in the background because uh, it's mostly just spoken jokes, so you don't have to actually look at the screen. To, to watch it. No, that, that's like the rule for me, is that if I'm gonna put something on while I'm working, it has to be something I can consume without looking at the screen. 
without looking at, like at the action or the people that are talking like just something I can listen to a lot of people do podcasts um, podcasts are a way to get smarter while you uh, are multitasking but I like to watch podcasts like YouTube videos that's good advice I'll try that yay um, suggestions for upcoming 3d artists um, suggestions for upcoming 3d artists um, make good use of free resources on the internet uh, don't forget that marketing and networking are very important when it comes to making it in this industry people might tell you that all it takes is a perfect portfolio but sometimes you gotta set yourself apart with your professionalism your your network of people that you know your online presence how, how your outreach and all that stuff okay so that's super important um, so I said I said make make good use of free resources so like tutorials online and stuff follow them Take notes. <laughs> um, and and do everything in your power to not become overwhelmed, which is easier said than done. So when you're learning 3D art, you guys all know this. It's it's very overwhelming, at least for me it is or it was and, and still is depending on what I'm learning. Um, and there are like you look at ZBrush and you're like, oh, I can't learn this. There are too many buttons. There are too many options. I'm not going to make it. And so what you got to do is reduce uh, your options, reduce um, decision paralysis. So just be like, okay, today I'm learning only move tool and clay, clay tool. Boom. That's it. And that way, like you don't get paralyzed by the amount of options you have. And then the last thing is to study a lot. Um, make studies like like right now this is a study i'm learning a little bit about the baby echidna so i'm learning anatomy a little bit of skin flaps a little bit of fat and things like that just it's a study it's low pressure just little small things a lot of small things that all the way to the end and it, it'll be a good learning experience let's turn this thing up a little bit i feel like i've talked a lot today oh no my skin flap I might just have to remove that and make a new one. I broke at some point. It's gonna move it off here for now. Bye. Oh, and if you're a beginner. No matter what you're working, so if it's hard surface or ZBrush, start with the... Okay, here's more beginner tips. I just remember like all my beginner tips. Focus on the fundamentals. So that's observation, anatomy, lighting, color, and that stuff, okay? That stuff pays off and it never goes away, okay? It never changes. It hasn't changed since Michelangelo years, okay? Um... Arguably, that's more important than knowing uh, every software and stuff like that. Because software comes and goes, it changes with time. Um, the fundamentals don't. They are such a worthy investment. So fundamentals... I forgot what was the other one. Thing that I was... Start with your primary shapes. Primary shapes, guys. So when you're starting to make a model, be it hard surface or organic, basic shape so like a circle for the head a cylinder for the neck and stuff like that and just make it as ergonomic possible and then move up from there um start simple start with low topology regardless like you don't want to have a million to poly uh, polygons right away you want it to look very boxy blocky uh you want the topology to look boxy and blocky not your mod ideally that this if it's supposed to be organic the last thing you want is boxy Working continuously made mistake, I think. I don't understand, Nikio. What kind of podcast do you recommend? Oh. <sighs> I listen right now to mental health podcasts. 
And then I had this huge phase uh, in February uh, that was my favorite phase in which I was listening to um, history, history of humanity um, stuff like like from the from like Homo erectus and shit, you know, what happened to Neanderthals, what happened to the agricultural revolution, how does society, modern societies form. Etc. So that's the kind of stuff I'm into. I like animal stuff. <laughs> um, I don't make all my podcasts about 3D because honestly, this has become very clear for me um, in the past few months. It's just that like, it is a terrible, terrible idea to only surround yourself with content and information about your very specific field. So if you're, if you're in games, only only listening to game podcasts or watching game videos or only watching 3D videos or whatever. Like, yeah, sure, that will teach you stuff, but it won't enrich you. Like, you'll just end up making art that looks like everybody else's art. Like, um, an example would be... Example would be how after God of War came out, every single person on our station made a Kratos. There was just Kratos here, Kratos there, Kratos, 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 Kratos. Kratos. And there's nothing wrong with making Kratos if that's what you want, but like, why not look beyond the cliche of our industry for your inspiration? So I like to listen to history. I like to, I like prehistoric specifically, I like prehistoric animals, I like prehistoric people. Um, dinosaurs. Love dinosaurs. I like understanding how society was formed. I like to understand the instincts that still live in our brains that make us tick. Like earlier, I was talking about um, being repulsed by animals without fur. Or mammals without fur, specifically. Anyway, I feel like I went on a huge tangent, but basically, like, use, use your human experience to inspire you uh, to think beyond the cliches of our industry. That's what I'm trying to say. Hi, Cosmin. Hi, Vin Diesel. <laughs> wow, what an honor. Lesson's going well today. Yeah, are you, are you talking about the stream? <clears throat> practice is the only advice I was given by comic book artists back when I was 18 years old. I mean, yeah, practice is super important, right? It's super important. Can't get much places without practice. Uh, although, like, there's so much more you can, like, enrich your practice with, right? Like, some people might take practice to mean I'm going to learn how to make a hand and I'm just going to make 45 hands. But I think meaningful practice is, is better. So like if you do like, okay, I make one hand. Okay, what did I do wrong? Okay, uh, what's this muscle called? Why is that so complicated for my brain to understand? Things like that, like meaningful practice. Trying different methods and things. I might keep working on this today after the stream's done. I miss my skin flap. Yeah, that skin flap was super important. We're gonna add it back. <laughs> a cubes! I was literally thinking about you like when I started the stream today. I was like, man, it's been a long time since I've been to a cubes stream where she's come to mine. <laughs> literally, like not lying or anything. I just feel like I have been disconnected from the um, community lately. How have you been, Billy Button? Let me go ahead and use the transpose brush um, for a second because I want to fix up the pose so that we can not transpose uh, transpose master so that I can make it cuter by like having it lay on its back a little bit so let's do that transform 
not transform Z plugin transpose master T pose mesh. That's a cute little creature. <laughs> uh, Everson, is there a chance you make character using the whole process starting with ZBrush and then show us for topology and uh, so that this character will be ready to use for animation? I do it on my personal channel. Speaking of which, let me post my links back up for some selfless, uh, selfish promotion or oh, shameless promotion. There we go. So I posted all my links. There's a lot. So there's my personal Twitch channel where I stream ZBrush every single Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Tomorrow we're doing a challenge on my on my um, on my Twitch stream. It's called the Creepy Creature Challenge. So um, you can come to the stream. You can make a creepy creature, and then at the end, share up the stream. Uh, every single person who participates in the challenge will get a shout out on my Instagram and Twitter, and the winner will receive a portfolio review if they so choose to have one. So uh, make sure to come by. So follow me on Twitch. The links are in chat. I also have Twitter, Instagram, and ArtStation, good places to reach out to me uh, um, and keep up to date with my streaming schedule and my artwork. And then my YouTube, which I have here, but I don't really post in there. And then my Discord, it's where the challenge is actually going to take place. So we're going to use Discord and Twitch for our challenge tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Zvo. Just a personal observation, after years of freelancing, having something playing, even if you don't stare at it, can be detrimental to your flow or focus when solving artistic problems, aka okay, always. Oh yeah, for me that's not the case. But here's the thing. So I, I told you guys I'm a technical artist, right? I can listen and watch things that are language based, so uh, that have dialogue, only if I'm doing visual arts. Only visual. If anything I'm doing requires the language part of my brain to work, I cannot listen to anything that has vocals, not even music. Fun fact. Um, if you're having that kind of issue, um, consider taking vocals out and just listening to instrumentals. Um, so if I'm doing coding, I can't listen to vocals if, or, or, or YouTube video or podcast, whatever. If I'm doing um, Houdini, I can't do that. If I, Whatever, it doesn't matter. I can't. <laughs> Crazy. I think it's just the language center getting confused. Like it can, it, language can only focus really on like one uh, one person speaking at a time. That's how our like the decoding center of our brain tends to work for most people. Let's go back and put the skin flap back in. Uh, curve tri fill. That's what I want. I'm gonna make it skinnier this time. I'm gonna go in here. Making lines in ZBrush for me is like the hardest part. Oh no. That's why when, when like the language thing, like whenever there's you're in a party and there's a bunch of people talking at the same time, you're just like, oh no, please one at a time. Oh no, symmetry was off. Okay, no big deal. Now this baby feels more complete again. And then split on mask points just so I can uh, mirror it. Oh shoot, I had transpose. Oh my god, I'm so distracted. See, this is what happens when you get distracted. I had transpose master turned on, forgot to transpose it, and then I added the curve brush. To it that explains <laughs> that explains so much. Okay, never mind, guys. Let's, let's take the transpose master off. I've never done this before, so let's see if what happens if that if we do that. Might as well just pose it now, right? Gosh, I just want it to be like like this. Well, see, I totally forgot we had started that progress, the process. Uh, certain types of music can help, but not all. Oh no, I made a creative too. I am the status quo. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Miguel, thank you so much. Miss Wildfire Hannah, I came in late. How did classes go this week? Uh, way better than the first two weeks, I must say. I think I'm getting slightly better. <laughs> Raven, uh, it's clever learning. You gotta know when you need to learn fundamentals or a program or a specific theme. It's slowly going through everything. Yeah. We are connected, a cute. On oh, real, hello. And students are freaky, but it's so cute in that like, oh, tiny old sad man way. Yeah. Oh no. So yeah, so like, I totally messed that up. So let's try again. <laughs> I'm just gonna take this stuff. I don't do all that. Cause that's not how you do tr transpose master. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problemo. My god, I think I like straight up broke it now. He's so cute. Oh. Uh, oh, if I weren't so busy, I'd be all over that, Anna. That's an awesome challenge. Uh, it would be perfect for you too. Like, you specifically really awesome at. Um... Okay. I don't know what I'm, what, where I am anymore. Where am I? Okay, let's think this through. What am I doing? ZBrush doesn't have any good ones by default. Oh, uh, you mean like for pores and stuff? Um, there are many tutorials on that. Um, it's, I, I like using just alphas. Should I go and buy one of their skin brushes pack? I buy skin brushes pack. I don't like to like spend all this time making my own brushes. Like I have my own few brushes, but I prefer to just go shopping. So I bought a bunch from the, um, Texture XYZ place. I, I bought their alphas, they're really good. And then I bought um, pa pa Blender's brushes on zebrushguides.com. And I also bought one brush that would cost like $3 from the um, Art Station store. And it was just like a skin flow uh, brush, which was really. Surprise. <laughs> I think this is it. I think this is where I call it because it looks perfect and it's never going to get better than this. I think. Hi, Javad. Welcome. How are you? I'm late. I'm good. I've had some technical difficulties today and then some confusion difficulties today. All right. So who here has... I'm going to just find random stuff here. Okay. Go ahead and try that again. I'm going to duplicate it and then mirror it. Gosh. <laughs> brain melts. I, I have worked really hard this past week, so that's probably part of my brain melts, but I can't be sure. Um, I did a lot. It turns out, like, do you have a lot of extra work um, as a teacher? But then again, like, it's a new job, so like every new job I always spend in lots and lots of hours at the beginning. You use the most simple UI I've ever seen among the ZBrush pros. Uh, there's a reason for that. Why do you think I use the most simple 
UI of all the ZBrush Pros you've ever seen. Will you continue this live on your Twitch channel? No. Um, I'm going live though tomorrow on my Twitch channel and we're doing a challenge. So if you want to participate, stop by Anna Carolina Art. The name is right there and the links are in chat. Um, will you continue this live? I already read that one. Have you tried using ZBrush retopology yet? Um, which kinds? I've done the zero measure and I have tried the new stuff that they just came out with where you use ZModeler, but I'm just not that good at ZModeler yet. I haven't had the time to actually learn it um, very well, so I need to actually one day, like maybe like take a Saturday and just like sit down from morning to night and figure it out from there. What happened to the little eyeballs? Didn't say challenge on Discord. Oh, uh, it's because we announced it on the stream and we haven't really talked about it too much ever since then. What is that animal? I've never seen it, I think. It's a uh, Echidna. And it's like very rough. Maybe I'll, I'll continue this on my stream uh, when I come back here on the Pixelogic channel because it's, it's been kind of sl slow going. Um, I use the most simple UI, the default UI. I actually talked about this earlier today because that is the best UI to teach beginners with. Um, it's not good to just show up with like your fancy uh, UI. In my opinion, it's not good to show up to like a place where beginners are trying to learn with a fancy UI. And then you're like, click this button and they're like, where? <laughs> um, so that's why I do it. So I used to have a fancy UI, um, but whenever I'm streaming, I just do this. It's way more convenient for beginners. Double is a Tennessee modeler on his live streams on Monday. Oh god, I have to watch that. I used to stream with him, that was so much fun. He, like, I, I don't know anybody who knows as much about ZBrush as he does. Like, when it comes to, like, software technology, like, it's incredible. Uh, him and Michael Pavlovich are, like, two people that, in my opinion, know the most about ZBrush that I've ever seen. Of course, there's others, but, like, that I've seen, people that do it, um, visibly on the internet, like, those two men. I don't know, man. They sip that ZBrush Kool-Aid a lot. I don't know what that means, though. They are just really, really, really good. I think Michael Pavlovich just really, really... May I don't know him, uh, but I, I imagine my theory is that he really likes software and learning software. Like, he has some awesome uh, Houdini tutorials and stuff like that, too, that I've watched. You use a custom menu. What are the most important, the most useful buttons you put on there? Um, it depends on your own workflow. Um, it depends on your own workflow. For me, it's move, play build up, daemon standard, different kinds of masks. Uh, Michelle, yeah, that helped me a lot earlier when I started to learn ZBrush. Thank you so much. No worries, Michelle. Um, Sun Pixel, my Pavlovich is insane with how it shows you the multiple ways to get the same result, but he does it in five minutes. <laughs> Man knows so much about ZBrush and software in general. Wonderful. Like, I, I go to his YouTube page uh, all the time if I need to learn something. Like, um, whenever I was making my Medusa character, I needed to figure out how to do a curved brush that had a uh, different start and end points or like meshes so that I could do like a curved brush with the snake head at the end and I just went on there and I saw it and it was wonderful uh, I was using the brush slice pour and when I press alt click the hashtag in the preto instead of doing the action that I want 
Slice for. É, tenta ver, aperta o menu, aperta o controle, é, espaço e, e confira se o RGB tá desligado. E vê de novo. Um, I'm sorry I entered late. With VR and AR in mind, as final objective, you should build low-poly models. As for as for games, what's the difference in workflow when aiming to model AR and VR? Um, so yeah, we aim for optimization, just like anything that renders real time. the The, the important part is that the real time rendering. So if whatever platform you're doing renders real time, then you have to focus on optimization. There's just no way around it. Um, let's see what else. Um, when making models for VR specifically, you might think, wow, you have to render 90 frames per second with stereoscopic vision, which is two different eyes. So basically renders two times more per frame, right? And you're like, wow, I gotta make this model instead of 2000 polygons, I make it like 50, 500 polygons or something. But that's like a, a common mistake. Um, when you're making VR assets, you can't use, you can't rely on normal maps the way you would um, for a game asset on, a, on like a flat screen. The reason for that being is that since you have stereoscopic vision in VR, again, two eyes, you can see depth really, really well. You can see depth really well in VR. Therefore, if you have a normal map faking a detail, you're going to be able to see that it's not actually, it doesn't have any depth. It only has shadow and light. So to you, it's going to look like it's spray painted on. And so you have to actually go higher with your topology in VR a lot of the time so that you can actually create the, the details and the relief items, uh, which is super counterintuitive because you just can't rely on normal maps. Uh, so that's like, for me, that's the most create, uh, the most missed difference. Like nobody knows that until it's too late <laughs> or until they've had some experience. Um, for AR, AR is more complicated, I think, because most times it's not tethered to a computer or never really. So it's even more, um, it even has more need for optimization. In AR, you don't have stereoscopic vision, so you can actually get away with uh, the normal map thing. Unless it's AR with stereoscopic vision, like the um, HoloLens uh, Magic Leap stuff. So in that case, yeah, probably that same thing applies. But if it's like with your phone or your iPad or something, then you're good. Um, that is such a common mistake. Like even at school, I heard the mistake being made, um, and I was like, "Actually, no, you can't do that." <laughs> um, so that's a big thing. Uh, you can't rely on textures for relief. We bought this airplane model at my old job, right? Just an airplane, uh, and it was made for games, and it was really well optimized. But the actual handles. The details, the panels were all hand painted like details. So in VR, it just looks like a sticker just <laughs> put on there, like this the handle is a sticker. Will you texture him? I think so. Not today because I'm running out of time, but I'm going slow today for some reason, or slower than usual, really. I like because it's such a weird little animal. It takes time to understand for me.
With the new console trying to push 8K or 4K, what file size do you expect the maps to get with the inclusion of ambient normal? And, oh, got it. I cannot tell you file size estimations because that's never something I've cared about too much. Like, I have a feeling that's going to be way more of an issue when fi Unreal 5 comes out. And then, um, and then everybody's trying to put their unoptimized meshes in Unreal, and then all of a sudden things are taking like five hours to load. We'll see how that goes. We will see. Yeah. I'm weirdly like not big on specs and things like that. I'm just like, I like doing, um, like, optimization diagnostics. That's something I like to do. But when it comes to frame rate, not file size, even though file size does impact it. What the new. Oh, you read that? Mm, hello from Italy. Hi, hi Marcel. Hola. Hi Shundan, welcome to the stream. How are you today? Guys, I'm gonna post my links up again. Make sure to follow me on social media. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, that's the best way to reach out to me. If you want to keep up to date with my streaming schedule and my artwork, uh, please do so. And if you want to join me for my live streams, I stream on my personal Twitch channel every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And I do ZBrush every single Sunday, and it's kind of like a laid-back, fun environment. And tomorrow we are doing a challenge. We're doing a creepy creature challenge. Um, so basically, like, come to the stream, make a creepy creature. We'll show it off at the end. Everybody who participates will get a shout out on my Instagram and Twitter, and then um, the winner will get a portfolio review if they so choose to get one. It's okay. It's not mandatory. You don't have to get a portfolio review. Uh, but uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is my Patronus. Did you know about milk fields that mothers feed off? Um, no. I'm not sure about that, but I do know a couple of things about... Oh, this is not platypus, I keep forgetting. My brain still thinks it's platypus. Yeah, it's a shame that I didn't have to do it. I'm going 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 to do it. I
É, como se diz? Eu tô fazendo um zero mesher nele. Não sei se eu fazer isso agora. Agora que eu tô pensando. Vou continuar por um tempinho. Kind of pushing in all this area so that I can create relief to form the um, like the underlying finger structure a little bit better. Is that an ant eater? It's an echidna. I don't even know how to say that word. I don't even know. I probably said it wrong this whole stream, but uh, it's an animal that I found out existed today and had to make. I thought it was a platypus when I started. I can't believe it's already Saturday, I just realized that like it felt like Saturday was just yesterday. Trying to lose track of time. I'm sure we all are with the COVID and staying at home and stuff. Time goes by weird. Okay guys, um, give me a second, I need to go uh, grab something. I'll be back in like three minutes. Alrighty. One loungy boy, so cute. Alright, I'll be right back.
Here we go. Can you guys hear me? Hi. <laughs> I'm back. Is that an anteater? No, it's an echidna. Uh, are you going to add a large r rubber ring for the swimming pool? Oh, that's such a good idea, Ruth. My echidna is lounging around in it. Oh my god, let's go ahead and do that now. Wait. Um, append. Ring 3D. I'm just gonna use the default. <gasps> Tiny hat. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh my god, you're brilliant. I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you, Ruth, for the idea here. Dope. That is dope. Cute, that is, ah, uh, I'm in love. I'm in love with baby Echidna being cute. This is an amazing addition, I know, right? Okay, Ruth, I'm gonna write your name down. And if I end up posting this on our station, you're gonna get like a shout out for the good idea. <laughs> Literally, like I'll be like, hey, thanks, Ruth, Space Cookie Angels, for uh, the, that, that, what is this called? floaty thingy idea. See, I told you guys, couldn't do this without you. <sighs> now let's just pose it a little bit better so that the fingers are not going through the tube. What is this called? <laughs> Somebody help me. Floaty thingy. Rubber ring. Mm. It works so well. Okay, let's go back here. Let's go ahead and pose this little baby boy. Hmm. That's glass that would probably be a helpful addition to this attempt. I'm gonna mess up some stuff, but it's worth it. Uh, it ended, and you're welcome on it. What? What ended? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it ended on Facebook. Um, yeah. I'm just posting the link to the, um, the stream for the Facebook people who think because Facebook dropped the stream. I think so. I posted the link there for them. Are you using muscle reference for this? Yeah. I mean, I'm using just the pictures, which I consider to be a reference, muscle reference, because they have muscles. I'm so in love. I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, impact to the to the tube to make it seem like it's actually, um, but it's gotta be just sub, but to make it look like it actually has weights. I mean, like it's barely touching at all, but you know, good enough. Mm. 
<laughs> Hello guys, what are you doing? We are making some it's cute Chidna baby on ZBrush. I'm gonna fix what's going on here with the um, bottom of the neck. I need to fix the mesh on this. Go ahead and paint this um, thing, maybe like pink. And the yellow color fill objects with yellow. When you started learning ZBrush, uh, wait, oh, when did I learn ZBrush? Um, like five or so years ago, or maybe a little bit more. Uh, it was when I was like 19, 18, 19, 19 is the age. Um, and hi, Chris Laser and Graphic Cards. What is that object filling up there? Um, what object floating? I know the Facebook stream died. Facebook uh, is weird with their streaming. Um, I think it, how do I put it? It like, likes to kill the <laughs> stream whenever a certain time comes. It like makes you schedule out how long the stream is going to be ahead of time and then it kills it. At least that's how I think happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again paint the eyeballs. I'm gonna make them dark gray. Oh, and I'm going to use the toy plastic material. So I'm going to select uh, RGB, mRGB, so that it paints with everything, material and color, fill objects. I'm gonna go back to my original color pattern. Oh, we have little shiny eyes for this little baby. Let's go ahead and do like a super, super, super duper quick, um, March down. Super quick poly paint on this, just so I can see how it how it look. Um. So let's take a look at the claws. Go ahead and make this into its own little object. Split on the mast. Right. All right. So let's do the claws first. Basically, I'm just gonna do the same thing: paintbrush, MRGB, toy plastic. And then like a, like a not so dark gray. Actually, the toy plastic is way too shiny for that. Basic material too works. And then I'm gonna do color, fill objects, and that should do it. There's a little pause. I imagine a floppy hat too, along with the drinking of drink as a straw. A floppy hat would be adorable. I like how the creature looks so comfortable I ended on that thingy. <laughs> you're welcome for the rubber drink idea. Oh, okay, so you're the same person as before, Space Cookie. Yes. Hey, Catalina, you mentioned that you are a technical artist. Do you work with ZBrush at work or is it mainly coding and Houdini? Uh, it's mainly... Well, let me uh, clarify something. When I was a technical artist, it was mainly coding and Houdini. And I still consider myself to be a technical artist, but I just started a brand new job as a college teacher. College professor, I guess. Uh, where I do a little bit more different things. So like I don't spend all day doing any one thing, you know um, Which is a super weird feeling, but I like it Gives me the chance to learn new things and move change my routine like I find that um, It's been so cool to change my routine around uh, because it makes time go slower <laughs> and that's like a weird observation, but not having as much of a routine has been making time go slower for me. It's like I notice every day a little bit more. I'm 
There must be studies on that. I can't be the only person who's ever felt that feeling. Right? Or maybe it's just because it's new and then eventually my body will get accustomed to it and it will feel like time's going by normally again. Have you ever used, um, hmm. Pretty sure he looks like a boss. I mean, the boss. Oh, you know who it looks like? The, um, little guy from Zootopia. The, the little, like, mafia boss. You guys know which one I'm talking about? I feel like I need more contrast around the face. Maybe like the cheeks. <gasps> oh yeah, that's it. That's what I needed. But more. Um, less intense gray on the face. And the cheeks did just were perfect. Possibly one of the most ridiculous things I've made on stream. Not as bad as um, the chicken I made one time, uh, which you guys will never see, <laughs> ever. Maybe I'll make it into like a challenge. Like if you guys can do certain things, I'll show you one day the chicken. But yeah, one time I made a chicken and it looks truly, <laughs> truly horrific. But like in a funny way. Oh, there's an object floating above the animal. What is that? Oh, this is the old skin flaps. I just moved them up above uh, just to get rid of them because I didn't feel like deleting them. So let's... Sometimes people make lazy decisions and I am one of those people. Round this area out a little bit more, though. <laughs> show the chicken. Show us the chicken. I will never show you the chicken. Although if you, there, it, it, I did it on the internet, so like, the internet never forgets. If one of you guys were to find the chicken, I wouldn't be able to keep it a secret anymore. I actually got called a lot of bad names over the chicken, but it was because, um, I don't know, man. There was this lady who was talking to me, like, th two years ago, when I had just started being a streamer. And she would uh, come on like every social media that I had and like every photo and stuff for a while, for maybe like a month. It wasn't a long time, it wasn't a big deal. And she would like cuss me out in Spanish. Just non-stop cussing me out in Spanish. Um, and I'm just here like, okay. And she was so creative too. Like I would run her, her cuss outs through Google Translate and I'd be like, wow, she really worked for that. For that one, you know. And then, uh, and then I found out what was going on. Turns out, um, her boyfriend was one of like the well-known ZBrush artists, and like we had talked one time about ZBrush. Uh, and so, I guess she was jealous or something. She went away after a while. I blocked her on everything.
But yeah, the chicken, uh, how that ties up to the chicken is that uh, she came to my stream where I made the chicken and she like started cussing me out in relationships with the chicken. I'll never forget that. What did you use as tech artist while working in Houdini? Um, I don't have that much Houdini experience. Let me start there. Uh, whenever I did use Houdini, I used it to just generate some simple geometry, like um, like for environment stuff. And I used it for creating optimization tools. That was where um, I really got it to shine. It was really nice. It was really helpful. Uh, the optimization tools were the bomb that I, that I was able to create. But yeah, basically that, just simple environment geometry stuff and then optimization. Uh, actually, I'm about to start learning it again. Uh, I, I'm gonna redo a tutorial I did uh, two years a year ago, if it's still up to date, and I'm gonna just start getting back into practice a bit. I love Houdini. That's one of the things about me. You guys gotta know. Love it. <laughs> Is that a mole or a creature from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Uh, it's a Echidna. Sculpt an ant eater. I've done an ant eater before, I think. If they show how to full screen when I am increased in zoom, it will pixelate and not look sh I you just I don't understand. Are you zooming like this? Like you just zoom normally. You press alt, press down with your pen, and then let go of alt and then drag around with your pen. You can always re-sculpt the chicken and make it more appealing if it looks horrible. Oh, it is horrible. It just looks hilarious. The Curse of La Lohana Chicken Edition. <laughs> Who do you need next level? You need to be a mathematician and an artist. Um, Maybe? I, yeah, probably, honestly. I recommend uh, starting with a little bit of Python or something. Oh, oh no. Okay. If you're trying to get into Houdini, but you want to have a warm up first, there are three things that you can do uh, to get your brain in, in the right frame of mind, in my opinion. I didn't read this anywhere, like, this is me talking and don't trust me on that 100%. But one, get acquainted with the uh, material creator in Unreal or Substance Designer, which will teach you a node-based workflow. Or learn Python, which is basic Python. It will help you get into the um, logic brain set, brain set, mindset. It'll teach you a little bit of logic. It'll be really good. Or blueprinting in Unreal, which is like the visual scripting language that will get you into the logic and into the node-based workflow. Those things are easy to learn. They're like that's less scary than Houdini, in my opinion, anyway. I'm trying to learn Houdini on environment work. Oh, nice. I think it's the future, like environment. Um, no, I think like procedural stuff is like the future if you're trying to stay in the realistic side of things and, and if not you know um but how do you zoom with your cursor in the model i don't you have to drag outside i'm gonna like i'm about to paint in like the lamest colors here but it's gonna be worth it Oh, no. It's not gonna look good, but it's just a block out, so I don't mind. Got 
God, I've heard this elevator song so many times here on stream. These things make it look a little bit more cute, festive colors. Um, you can use right click to zoom when you're over the model, but it's CD if you're using a tablet. Oh yeah, I would never do that. Because like, you, they give you this border here on purpose so that like, if see I'm like zoomed in and everything that I can click on is a model, you can just use this border outside to, to click and zoom and do the things. That's a tip, in case you guys didn't know that. And Unreal is also mixed level. You need to understand visual scripting, which means you also need to understand scripting. I recommend starting with like super basic Python. I think Python is the easiest language to learn, unless you use uh, like children's games that teach programming. Like, it, it sounds condescending and lame, but like, why not? It teaches you, it teaches you logic and and the flow of things. Might as well. <laughs> I have them. Uh, I haven't tried them yet, but I, I thought it would be handy. I have some games that are like teaching kids how to code by trying to get a robot across a level, like a, a map. It's actually like a board game. It's like a, you teach, uh, so you have to like make like branches and if statements and stuff, you know, you gotta go through them. Hello, Mahaku, is that an achievement? Yes, you're the first person who has come in and guessed the right thing. I'm just gonna paint on like just where it's even more pink. Just a little. Mm. I'm actually fantastic because no one's in the now. Um. My games helps with making Python games. Oh, nice. I should look at that. Are you game dev as well, Anna? Yeah, I'm a game dev. VR developer specifically. But yeah, it's game dev still. So cute. Thank you, root user. Guys, it is 2 p.m. I have to go have lunch. So I'm going to post my links up and give you some announcements before I go. So my links are all in chats. There's my Twitch there where I stream ZBrush every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And it's a really fun environment, so make sure to stop by. Tomorrow we're doing a creepy creature challenge. Uh, so uh, if you want to participate in the challenge, come by my stream at 5 p.m. Central and join the Discord. Uh, everybody who participates will get a shout out in my Instagram and my Twitter. And um, the winner will get a portfolio review if they so want, if they want one. Uh, then I have my Twitter, Instagram, and Art Station. Those are the best places to reach out to me, ask me questions. I try to get to everybody. Um, that asks questions and stuff and needs advice. Um, and it's also a good way to keep up to date with my artwork and my streaming schedule. And then last but not least, we have our Discord right in there. So make sure to join the Discord server. It's where we do the challenges. It's where we do games and, and we share tips and tricks, ZBrush tutorials. We give feedback like 24 seven on there. So make sure to join. Alrighty guys, if you haven't yet, follow the Pixelogic uh, page wherever you are watching from, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch, doesn't matter. Um, a lot of really, really, really amazing artists stream on here, okay? Like, my favorite artists, like, half of them stream on this channel. So make sure to follow, make sure to like, and uh, come back for more streams. I stream here every other Saturday, and I alternate between Portuguese and English streams. Uh, but may definitely uh, watch the other artists. They stream every day, you know, here. So... Make sure to do that, and I am off so I can go have lunch, but thank you guys so much for everything. You guys rule. Uh, stay safe, wash your hands, 